Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 3, Part 2 of the discussion, God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing the operation of God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, introducing our responsibility to forgive and repent, and our role in engaging both processes. This session was recorded on 6th of September 2017 from 12.15 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Um, God's viewpoint of accidental sin. Hmm. So, since we've already said there's no real accident in God's universe, and that every occurrence is actually driven by a set of conditions which operate within the boundary of God's laws. Hmm. If we then are examining God's definition of an accident, mm. uh, we clearly need to answer the question like, what is God's viewpoint? How does God feel about accidental sin? Mm. And there's a couple of different ways we can talk about that again. Mm. So mm. let me read the first one mm -hmm. and then um, sure. yeah, you can comment. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> All right. Firstly, accidents that are corrections of sinful conditions. So, we were just speaking about this in our previous section. Yep. So, position one, a group of sinful conditions of the soul that God's laws operate upon that create an event to correct the sinful conditions in each person, in every group of people, and the society that's affected by the event. That's called an accident by everyone participating in the event. Mm. So, in this case, the accident is really a previous set of sinful conditions that the people involved in the so-called accident have purposefully ignored. Mm -hmm. And these sinful conditions have remained within the soul of each person involved uh, and affected by... Well, the people who are affected by the hearing or hearing about the accident. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. the people who are in the accident, the people who heard about the accident, everyone who feels affected. In whatever way. In whatever way, happy, sad. Obviously, uh, if you're just hearing about it, you're affected less. And yeah. if that's the case, then the sin that you had participating in the accident is probably less. Mm -hmm. If you were personally affected by it in terms of a greater effect, in that someone you love died or someone like that, then what the emotion you had participating in was probably greater. Yes. And therefore, it will have a bigger, you will have a bigger effect emotionally on you than what would do if you were just watching the accident on television, just hearing about it or Tell something me. like that. All right. Makes sense? Yes, so, it does. But, but, so, but it's all based on this previous set of sinful conditions. So, so before the event even occurred, yep. there had to be inside of all the people involved and all the people that heard about it and, all the, and the society that heard about it and the society that had to respond to it and all the people who had to respond to it, there has to be something inside of every one of those persons involved that did participate in the creation of the accident in some way, mm -hmm. the so-called accident, because it's not really yeah. one, it's based on laws. But something, the sinful condition had to exist before the actual accident occurred, because mm. the sinful condition itself, interacting with the laws, is what creates the accident. Yeah. So, so the sinful condition has to occur. It's already has there. Has to be there already. And if you think about it being there already, that also then means that God's laws would have already been trying to correct every one of those individual people's sinful condition already through, so that, through other events. Through other events, through the operations of conscience and compensation, which accidents. we're going to talk about, <laughs> through like. other events, other attractions that well, we talked all about attractions, aren't in they? the session yesterday. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. So the reality is that to get a bigger event, there has to be a whole lot of people ignoring a whole lot of little events. Yes. Does that make sense? It does. Before there can be a big event. Yeah. And, and if we don't ignore the little events and yeah. we release the emotions associated with the little events, the big events can't occur. Yes. In fact, they're prevented by law from occurring. Which is why I uh, used to say years ago, always sweat the small stuff. Yeah. Because the small stuff is really God bringing you things to look at. And if you just want to ignore every small thing that happens in your life, it has to get bigger. Yeah. 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 So, so it's very important for us to see that it, the more we ignore the smaller events, mm. the bigger event must be yeah. to correct the condition. Because now we've got a collective condition 
driving bigger events. And the power of each person's soul is such that if we got more and more and more people in agreement with a bigger condition, the bigger a condition has to occur yeah. in order to correct. The bigger event has to occur in order to correct the bigger condition. And because most people ignore the smaller things, many big things happen. <laughs> exactly. It's yeah. very rare for most people to even notice the smaller things, let yeah. alone do anything about them. Yeah. And even when they do notice them, it's very rare for them to do anything about them. Yeah. So, so this is our problem. Our problem yeah. is that we ignore all of our small things and then we get to a big thing, we go, oh, act of God or, oh, yeah. God's punishing us or something yeah. <laughs> instead yeah. of seeing it as, no, there's a whole lot of serious <laughs> small things that occurred here that could have been corrected individually and collectively that should have been corrected individually and collectively, even right down to things like just not being able to communicate with spirits because your guide would be able to tell you something's about to happen if you could and, and stop you from even being there. So even just a little, that might be what contributed to your being involved yeah. even. So there's so many potential things that could have stopped you from being involved. Just just missing a train or missing a bus or having a car accident on the way to the airport, you would never be got involved on the plane in the first place. Or yeah. the fact that you know, you know, that you decided you went on that flight at that particular time, at that particular day. And you know, there, there's so many things that cause us to make the choices we make. Many of those things are unloving. Yeah. We're trying to save money or we're trying to save time or we're trying to we're not caring about the environment or you know, there's so many hundreds of things mm. that we could be thinking at the time and and you add up all of those things in each individual you can see why a big event occurs because we haven't get, get let go of or yeah. dealt with any of the smaller ones yeah yeah yes so so um, so once the sinful condition exists now god's now there's going to be events now there's going to be events. there are going to be events yeah. and that is to create a higher awareness or knowledge of the sin that exists within yes. each person individually within the group collectively yes that's going to happen and here we're not talking about see see god's not talking about punishing sin so this is a, a problem we have with it we often think about that which we'll see about later talk about later today yeah but god's just trying to correct the fact that yeah. there is a problem here that's yeah. going to cause other problems you know and, <laughs> and it is causing problems and it is causing problems constantly. in your life already <laughs> and for other people's lives and this is exactly. all in the operation of god trying to bring everyone back into harmony with love correct and yeah. if we listen to the small things we won't have to deal with the big things yes hmm. nevertheless god's laws create an event to expose uh or to create awareness or knowledge mm -hmm and release mm -hmm. and release of the sinful conditions within us that's right either through repentance or forgiveness either through repentance or forgiveness and this is why this is so relevant to our discussion yes. uh, in forgiveness and repentance so yes. that's what happens and once we actually do engage forgiveness and repentance and that sinful because condition because of the event because of the event mm -hmm. um of course we could of course most a lot don't do there yes. what they do is in fact the opposite they get more, more resentful angry. more angry yeah less forgiving blaming, more less blaming personal responsibility. less personal responsibility yeah. that's often what happens yeah which is the opposite direction that god's really wanting them to go yeah. but it is the direction most humans want to go because they want to avoid their emotion yes and all yep. that's going to do is create another bigger event. Yes. Yeah. And that's why, though, you do see some people who have massive events in their life, they choose to feel about the event and it alters the direction of their life in a very positive way. Yeah, substantially. Substantially. Yeah. Um, because they've chosen to... And then other to... people refuse to feel about event after event after event after event, yeah. thinking that somehow the God's got, you know, it in for them somehow or something <laughs> like that. But all, all that's happening is the law is just trying to deal with the same emotion, usually building up over time because we're refusing to release it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. However, once that, once that process has been engaged and mm -hmm. inevitably will be forgiveness and repentance, the sinful conditions are removed yep. um, from each person involved. And this kind of accident, so-called accident, doesn't happen anymore. Will not be able to happen anymore because the sinful condition of the soul that interacted with the law doesn't exist anymore. It's so, all done. So it's all done. Now, of course, that would be, that'd be ideal. Yeah. That's the ideal circumstance, obviously, in practice. It's very rare, given the fact that humans are so resistive to emotions and so resistive to sin and so resistive to forgiveness and so resistive to repentance. It's very, and they're also resistive to small events yeah. because they're not sensitive to small events. 
And given all of those factors, it's pretty rare that a large event's going to have that effect, but, but we, it could have the effect. Mm -hmm. And God designed it to have the effect. It's just the choices we're making that cause it to not have that effect. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So there's real science in it. There is. Yeah. I think that's why you and I love yeah. talking about it more because it's, it's exactly. very logical. Yeah. 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 So, but we're talking here about God's viewpoint of this kind of sin, of this kind of accident. Yes. So, so here we've defined the accident as one of these problem number one accidents, yeah, which yeah. are so, a, a previously existing soul based sinful conditions. Yes. That exist collectively, individually or collectively in all the people affected by the so-called accident. Yeah. 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 And God's viewpoint is, guys, you're ignoring sin within you. My laws are going to operate yeah. to try and help you see the sin and release it. Yeah. And That's this is the most loving event that I could create or that the laws yeah. could create that would allow the triggering of the specific emotions involved for each person to release so yeah. that you all benefit from it at some point in time. Yeah. Right, and so. and if it's not released and from within you... it's the most you, gentle thing God could have created. Yeah, and that's crucial, well. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. When you consider how many uh, quite dramatic things happen, and that's the gentlest thing God could do yeah. in order to try and overcome the resistance within people and bring them to a state of forgiveness or repentance. Correct. <laughs> so, the, so the other thing that God feels about this is that, well, my law's operating to do this for you. It's because I want you to... Yeah. come into harmony with love and the other thing god feels is god thinks is a good thing god thinks it's a good thing yeah of course because the laws are good all the laws are, are beautiful yeah they all are based on love of course it's a good thing yeah having soul-based sinful conditions is not a good thing and god's trying to help you remove them and he's already tried to help you remove them many times before by exposing you to other events that were smaller and you didn't listen and you didn't do anything yeah what what is can what can be done nothing yes. but the event yes that's right. And if those sinful conditions are not removed, God's feeling are, well, it's going to have to keep it's happening. It's going to happen again. Yeah. It's going to keep happening over and over again. Yeah. This is why wars on the planet keep happening over and over again, because we don't, we don't remove the sinful condition that creates them. Yes. Mm. Yeah. 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 Same goes with terrorism and other things like that. All the so-called world events that we're worried about are all r really the result of our refusal to release the causal soul-based sinful emotional conditions that create them. Yeah. So, you know, they are going to keep happening until we as humanity decide collectively and individually yeah. to remove them. Yeah. And now God doesn't see that as an accident. That's a, that's by design. God designed <laughs> it that way. Yeah. God wants it to be that way. Yeah. It's not an accident from God's no. perspective. And so God treats that as intentional sin. Mm. We've, in, we've intended to sin and you've been corrected many times before and you didn't listen. And you didn't listen. And the key thing here as well when we're talking about this is um, when you start to analyse these events, they're happening because you're already willfully trying to ignore what the sin is really about. And so when people try to attribute to themselves or to others from a purely intellectual basis, what the actual sin is that's attempting to be exposed very often they're wrong mm. because it requ god's trying to open us up emotionally to what exactly. is creating the attraction each individual would have to look at their past life of what's yes. been triggered up until yeah. that point yeah and they will see a pattern that that demonstrates what the problem what it probably would have been um before the big event occurred yeah and and so you, you can really say that the big event is because we didn't listen to the listen, little events. Yeah. And the little events happen because we didn't listen to God in the first place. Yeah. We, if we listen to our conscience, as we'll learn later, and we, and we truly understood the laws involved, yeah. we wouldn't need even the little events to occur. No. So well, our life would be very free of accidental, terrible accidental events uh, under those right. circumstances. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right, we just mentioned a few, we've listed here a few examples, examples yeah. of these kinds mm -hmm. of accidents. Yeah, it's good to go through some. Yeah. Mm. So someone who doesn't repair their vehicle regularly mm -hmm. and has an accident yep. that harms other people. It's not really an accident. You know, there's a, there's a directly attributable cause. There's negligence involved and, uh, and obviously an unloving condition that caused the negligence yep. that God's trying to correct. 
and uh, and and obviously the person didn't listen to the previous things that God would already be demonstrating. And uh, like I've I've seen these situations occur with vehicles many many times where where you have warning after warning after warning after warning after warning that something mm -hmm. is wrong, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden there's an accident and everybody throws their, ha ha their hands in the air and goes, oh, wasn't that terrible that that happened to me and whatever. And I'm going, how can you say that? Like there was a whole string of events that you ignored before. Then you've always driven too fast. You've had plenty of people warning you about that you were you have kept your car in terrible repair you know last time you know in the last year this fell off it and that fell off it and this happened and that happened and this happened and that happened yep. and you ignored all those events and now you have the big event occur which naturally is going to have to occur yep. because you created it through your condition of ignoring all the little ones mm -hmm. and it's naturally going to have to occur and now you want to blame someone else for it yeah. it's not very kind you know yeah. it's the same with the uh, you know attempting to find a single person to blame for a, for an aircraft accident for example yeah there are some people that are more culpable certainly mm -hmm. than others mm -hmm. and some may even have intentions that are uh, that are the direct cause and they are obviously the most culpable yeah to the creation of the event but in many cases as that's not the case. In many cases, there's a whole series of little things being ignored day after day after day, year after year, and eventually they all add up and cause yeah. the a, a, end result. So there's a chain of events yeah. that end up to a tipping point that yes. causes a big accident. Yeah. And all of those chains of events, usually there was plenty of warnings about. There was obviously attitudes of love that were in error, and, and yet all the people involved in them. Yeah. So we can't really call it an accident. It's, it was created through a lot of intentions. Yes. Yeah. So similarly, a company or business that who continually ignores safety, that's another example in yeah. that. Um, yeah. Somebody who drinks alcohol to excess and continues to drive under the influence. Yep. Or even just drinking alcohol to excess without driving causes its own problems. It does. You, you know, add driving to it, it's going to cause a lot more, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, I had a work colleague uh, once who continually drank to, you know, at social work events. Mm -hmm. And a I myself would say to him, don't drive like this. This is wrong to drive like yeah. this or other people, you know, just stay here the night, whatever. And um, he, for months, in fact, over a year, he ignored that. And eventually he had an accident that severely injured another person. And he ended up going to jail because he was so um, mm. intoxicated mm. at the time. Mm. And yet there was many, many um, and from smaller God's point events. Of view, that's almost a murder. Yeah. Because he, he ignored so many, so many small events so many you know attitudes he had that were obviously wrong where he yeah. was negligent didn't care and even and, his desire to drink to excess and uh, the average person on a, the planet or the average judge would probably send him to a short sentence but the reality is god's yeah, going to send him sentence. to one much longer yeah. until yes. he addresses the underlying cause because he's got the cause of not just the the desire to drive under the influence but the desire to drink in excess in the first place exactly was, without any consideration to anybody else and yeah. the effect it has on anyone else yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay mm -hmm. um what about this one a child who has an accident mm -hmm. due to a parent's neg negligence in educating the child about um about the implications of the activities they start to engage or even about their emotional projections which make the child feel yeah uh, we've already really covered that haven't covered we when we yeah. talked about the parent who's projecting all this fear of the child and mm. the child falls over because they're getting this barrage of fear all the time yeah and so the child loses confidence in itself and falls it over and so there's that's a, there's really a great example of that it's a way of um, trying to educate the parent about the sin of their fear and the projection of their fear as how sinful that is or how Correct. harmful that is rather. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. The, child, the child is um, an unfortunate uh, side, side effect, unfortunately, of the parent's projection there. Mm. And mostly because the parent thinks they own the child. That's why they're projecting that. Yeah. And they don't see the child as God's child. That God yeah. has the child protected anyway. Even if the child died, they're still alive and all those, all those other factors. Yeah. The parent sees things differently and therefore projects all those beliefs on the child, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But then the child doesn't deserve that. Mm -hmm. um, and the parents, it's totally the parents in the child. The child, the only, the only thing that would be attributed to the child is just the instant pain that occurs at the moment. That's yeah. all. Yeah. And nothing else will ever occur to the child. Mm. for that particular sin of the parent. Mm. Mm. 
Mm. Yes. I was just thinking there about, um, I can think of a number of examples where, um, so for example, with the work colleague that I had, mm -hmm. where I spoke to him about not driving. And I'm sure other work well, colleagues must have as well. Well, surprisingly, very few did. Right. So I was thinking about the attribution of the sin compared to, of the sin within myself surrounding that issue and the attribution of uh, consequences uh, when well, somebody... Well, you would have felt free of guilt when he died or well, when he had he an accident. Die. Yeah, yeah. When he had yes. the accident and hurt somebody else, you would have felt free of guilt because you yeah. did warn him. Yes. Whereas other people who didn't warn him would not have felt free of yes. guilt because that's a part of the penalty yeah. of not saying the truth. Um, but they, you also don't have to say continue saying the truth to someone who continues yeah. rejecting it. So yeah. if you said it and they, and they didn't listen to you, well... Yeah. That is now their responsibility and their choice, and God mm. doesn't attribute. When mm. you've neglected to tell the truth, yeah. God definitely attributes certain consequences to that. And mm. what about it's so situations where we have friends who um, they realise that they were involved in cr criminal activities mm -hmm. that involve members of their family, mm -hmm. and they felt their conscience bothering them that they needed to make themselves known to the police that they'd done this mm -hmm. thing. But there was a lot of familial pressure because of the implication it would have upon the other family member for mm -hmm. them not to do it. Mm -hmm. And they, they listened to the family pressure more than they listened to their own conscience. Mm -hmm. So they delayed going to the police. Mm -hmm. And in the mean, if they had have gone immediately, the mm -hmm. implications for the family member would have happened immediately. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. But they could have happened, could have happened. more rapidly. Yep. But in the, in the delay, mm -hmm. eventually they did go to the police, but in the delay that happened, this other family member was actually implicated and convicted and went to jail for a much more serious crime that they committed in this interim mm. period. Mm. So there's a, there's a whole lot of things about sin and uh, our... Acceptance of it. Acceptance of it and our action mm -hmm. uh, our, or inaction when it comes to the sin that we're already aware that's within us mm -hmm. that creates flow and events, doesn't that's it? That's right. So yeah. they, they are partially responsible for the final event, obviously. Yes. Obviously nowhere near to the degree of the, of the person person. who's actually doing the trafficking at the yes. time. But, yes. you know, but the fact that you withheld truth or... The fact that you delayed the, you know, telling of truth or whatever, they're always going to have yes. negative effects on your life, always, yes. because they are sins. And God's assessing all of that. God's laws God's are laws assessing. God's laws are always assessing yeah. them, yes. Yeah. 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 Mm. So delaying telling the truth is a sin from God's perspective, mm. just mm. delaying it. Because, because, because telling the truth has a power in the moment, yeah. and that moment, the earlier it is, the better. Yes. So when you delay telling the truth, you've now sinned. Yeah. Like, you know, so yes. people think that they can just delay telling the truth or not tell the truth at all. No, they're both they're sins too. Yeah. You know, they are because they have negative effects on other people. Yeah. And therefore they create harm yeah. to other people purposefully because of some fear or other thing that we've got going on inside of ourselves. We chose to do it. So it's a purposeful choice that we've made. And so they are, it's treated by God as a purposeful sin. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So God's God's uh, viewpoint of the matter of purposeful sin is quite yes, and we talk about yeah, that a bit sorry, later. But that's often but, skipped out but of the uh, realm of you can see here with accidental yeah. sin, you can see there's not too many things that really fit. Well, there, most things fit if it accidents. Most yeah. accidents fit into this first definition, yes. which is yeah. really not an accident, but actually a whole sum total of collective sinful soul conditions creating events to trigger emotions that release, that should have been released earlier, but everyone chose not to. Not to, mm. yeah. All right, so let's move on to accidents that are the correction of mistakes. Yes. So this we spoke about earlier as well. Mm -hmm. It's making a mistake in love due to a lack of education or lack of developed condition of love that results in the breaking of one or more of God's laws and there's subsequent consequences based purely on the fact that the law was broken. Mm -hmm. And in this case, the accident is really a state of ignorance mm -hmm. exists mm -hmm. due to a lack of knowledge or education or information prior to that point. Mm -hmm. um, there's no prior sin, but rather um, we haven't had enough experience to be educated. Yes. So God's laws create an event. God's laws create an event. It's going to be usually a lower event. 
mm -hmm. than any of the other types of events that we've already discussed. Yep, because there's no existing sin that we're already ignoring. That's right. Yeah. So there's not already a chain of events that have led up to the fact that this particular event has occurred. Yes. There's no longer any chain of uh, corrective uh, events that, God had, uh, that God's laws would have created to correct us from this particular mistake that we've made because we didn't make the mistake before yeah, and nobody yeah. else around us made the mistake, you know, we, we yeah. didn't make the mistake with anyone around us before. You know, this is the first time we've done that, mm -hmm. the first time we've made this mistake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the event is really to educate us, to give us higher awareness, knowledge, yeah. uh, to know, start to understand and know laws exist that yeah. we're interacting with yeah. and to educate everyone involved. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And God, the purpose of the event is just a purpose of education and uh, that's yep. all. And, but once that event has occurred, mm -hmm. we are now viewed as more informed on this topic. Correct. Now there's more responsibility involved, isn't of there? Of course, every time we're more educated, God attributes more responsibility. Yeah. So now that we know from a past experience that this particular thing might happen in the same circumstance, the second time or the third time we come around to it and the same thing happens, can we really say mm. that it's now a mistake? No. An accident? No. no. Because no. now we are making decisions and we're ignoring past Experience. experience yep. through the process. And that obviously is going to cause further detriment to us in yes. some way, whether it's physical or emotional or spiritual. And God's viewpoint then changes. Of course. Yes. Of course. But in this case where it's the first time, mm -hmm. God's viewpoint is that... Um, well, now that this has happened, everyone should become more informed about love mm -hmm. uh, and therefore more able to love others and themselves yeah. and their environment. Yes. Isn't, isn't this interesting? Because basically what we're saying is you're better off doing lots of first time things yes. than you are doing lots of things 20 times over. <laughs> and isn't it funny that as we age... We, we do, do less do first time things and we do the same <laughs> bloody thing over and over again, don't we? we do. <laughs> and expect different results and yeah. live with all this pain. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, so the beauty of doing lots and lots of first time things over and over again, um, you know, new first time things each time, is that, is, that, is that we have a learning lesson in each one of them, but, but it's very rare, even if we make a mistake in love with regard to it, that, that there'll be too much correction involved yeah. because it's just a learning lesson from yeah. God's perspective. Yeah. So, so, you know, God's basically encouraging us also yeah. to do a lot of things that are new yes. rather than just do a lot of old things repeated. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, and the event itself is the only form of correction. We've mentioned that already. Yes. All the correction is in the event itself. Yes. It's all just done, dusted, it's all finished. There's yeah. no further recompense or no further compensation yeah. required. No, no repentance required. No forgiveness, no forgiveness needed, needed. Unless, you know, obviously we might have interpreted harm to it. And if we have, then we'll have to forgive that. But well, in fact, we'll talk more about that. Yeah, we'll talk that, about our interpretations mean. of events later. But, yeah. but you can see in this particular case, it's a, it's a very simple event. And the consequences are what the law demands. That's it. That's and it. the law has demanded its consequence and that's the end of it. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Well, in fact, the, all consequences are what the law demands, but the, but in these cases, there's not a lot of sort there's of... There's not a lot of laws involved. Laws involved. Because laws yeah. involved relating to soul-based intention to sin are very, very different to laws involved when you just sort of had no intention to sin. Yes. So, so and that's what we're really trying to draw out in these examples about accidents is mm. that God is assessing intention a lot. Yes. And God mm. is assessing assessing genuine ignorance as opposed to willful ignorance correct so in our first example of what the world commonly calls an accident there's a lot, a lot of, willful of willful ignorance, ignorance going on right from very small events right up to these large events yes. huge amounts of willful ignorance yeah yeah that god has been sending through the law yeah law uh, more over and over again so many events that we've attracted in our history still trigger, trying to trigger that same old emotion yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that we are just as resistive as we've ever been for and usually get more resistive to and uh, and unfortunately we just don't listen we, we are like people who who keep trying the same thing hoping for a different result yeah and obviously that's a point of logic that we need to change in ourselves if we think that's a possibility yeah 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 mm. all right um but this second type is where you know 
I just lost my point. But you know, the, the second type of accident is where we, we are, the event is just happened to educate us. Mm. Um, mm. And there's not many true examples of this kind of thing. Well, there, there are a lot of examples of it, but usually there's a mixture. You know, yeah. it's usually a mixture. But, but every time we embrace a new loving activity that we believe is loving, yes, basically we're in this state. Yeah. Every time we, every time we embrace a new activity that we believe is loving, even mm -hmm. though if we don't know, mm -hmm. we're actually in this state. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, we'll know whether it's loving. Well, quickly, st God starts to educate us because God's yeah. big desire is that we're educated. That's right. Love. He wants to educate us in love. So, so, so this is another advantage of this kind of activity. All we have to do is believe it's loving in our heart, we're sincerely. sincerely and take the action and God will provide correction and the only correction that we're ever going to get for it is whatever the laws we may have broken in, in, in mistakenly because mm -hmm. we didn't know and then we'll know oh that law says that oh that gives me the uh, you know next time I do that same thing or mm -hmm. next time I try that same activity I'll bear in mind that law yeah that I didn't know about before yeah right and then of course the next time you embrace it because it's still driven by this desire to love mm -hmm. It will be more positive outcome. Yeah, and this is how you can uh, generate more and more positive outcomes. So, so it's really good to embrace new activities, and it's also n good to embrace the activity as long as you sincerely believe in your heart that it is a loving thing to do. Mm. And you will be corrected if it wasn't. And the key is to look at the correction and and not think, oh, God's telling me not to do that. No, mm. God's just telling you to make that loving. How to refine? How it. to refine it to to make it loving. Yeah. Now, in some cases, it, you can't refine it to make it loving and you've got yeah. to give the whole idea up. Yeah. In other cases, you can. Mm. And you'll be led down that path yeah. if you follow that direction. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So that's basically God's um, attitudes and feelings and viewpoint mm -hmm. of the two different things that are commonly called accidents. Excellence. Yeah. And, <laughs> and how it relates to sin in terms of what happens to sin. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Let's now talk about God's definition of intentional sin. Yeah. So what is the definition of intentional sin from God's perspective? From God's, how does God define intentional sin? Well, obviously it's quite clear. If we, if, if intentional sin is when we intend to, so it's any thought, word, action, you know, uh, intention, emotion, desire, um, behavior, behavior, projection, projection, whatever, whatever yep. it is coming out of us, of course, and whatever yep. it is that's motivated by a soul, mm -hmm. um, that is has intentionally broken a law of God, yep. or or intentionally wanted to harm somebody, mm -hmm. or intentionally wanted to control somebody, or intentionally wanted to manipulate somebody, or intentionally wanted to do something with, with, which has damaged somebody, yes, or, or damaged the environment, mm. or damaged ourselves, yeah, right. And we need to be clear here, don't we, that if I know that the action causes damage to the environment, so I have knowledge, prior knowledge, that doing this thing is harmful to others or the environment or mm -hmm. myself, mm -hmm. and I do it, mm -hmm. I'm intentionally creating harm, aren't I? Yeah. As soon as I have knowledge and I do it again, I'm intentionally creating harm. Yeah. <laughs> quite uh, you know yeah so use of plastic on the planet yeah you should be a toilet paper yeah <laughs> eating meat yeah they all create harm or something yeah um you know now if you've intended to do it yeah yeah or if you are you going to reuse the product are you going to yeah. use it over and over and over and over again well that's different yeah but if you're going to if you're going to just use it straight away that's yeah. not different now. So, you know, there's all sorts of decisions you can see that will affect. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 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 Now, of course, sins of, towards the environment are much of, of a much lower nature. Than towards others. Than towards people. Yeah. yeah. So if you intentionally want people to meet your addictions, and you're selfish and you want them to do what you, t what you tell them and you control them and you manipulate them and you... You want them to, you know, and you, or, or even worse than that, let's let's say you intentionally want to harm them. Mm. You really want to hurt them. Now you've got some very big problems. Yeah. Big yeah. problems. Yeah. There's going to be big laws in operation there. Yeah. Big yeah. consequences. Big consequences. 
All right, let's talk. Uh, we've itemized a few, some examples of, of intentional. intentional sin because mm. it helps us to mm. for people to have an understanding of what we mean. And perhaps right at the outset, we need to include the first accident <laughs> <laughs> that what we do you define, mean? you know, the accidents, yes. the so-called accidents that happen because of a combination of collective soul condition of sin. That's that, been that ignored. Where everyone ignored the previous events that have yeah. occurred, releasing them. You know, God sees that as intentional, not, not as an accident. Not as an accident. Yeah, <laughs> very good. Yeah. All right. So um, it's the breaking of God's laws of love mm -hmm. with purpose and knowledge that it will potentially harm me, other people or the environment. Mm. So it's even just the potential of harming. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so that's like, mm, I'm going to start a campfire everything's really dry we had nothing's there's been no rain for six months um i'm going to start this campfire and go to bed gee the potential is that it could spread and you know harm other campers and burn down six houses but i'm just going to take the risk or i'll keep my eye out or yeah yeah if you were truly responsible you'd stay up all night wouldn't you or put out the fire or put out the fire <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. You'd do one or the other, or yeah. you'd have some kind of sentry <laughs> who looks after <laughs> yeah. the fire, yeah. you know, on two hours. You're on watch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you could see and understand the danger, the potential danger of it. Yeah. Yeah. And you know it could potentially harm others. Exactly. So yeah. knowing that it would potentially harm others, you would you would exert more loving influence over it, mm. wouldn't you? Yeah. You, you would, you, if you had a true intention to care for other people, you would you would not be careless whatsoever. Yeah. 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 So even carelessness is not considered to be accidental. No, mm. no. Okay, um, the breaking of God's laws of love with desired ignorance of the potential harm of myself, mm. other people and the environment. So that's where I always call it willful ignorance, you know, where yes. I just don't want to know really. Yeah, you know, I, I, don't, I don't want to examine the look. So, so what I'm trying to educate the people here, we, we, we do a lot of environmental projects, but mm -hmm. one of the things I'm trying to educate the people who arrange deliveries of is I want to, I want to know where the material came from because yeah. it came from a process where I'm actually causing the process, then it's not environmentally friendly anymore. We only want waste We only want waste by byproducts, you know, yeah. byproducts of somebody else doing something else that they're going to do that yeah. comes to on the property, not, not doing it specifically for us. So we get hardwood chip delivered. Some of it comes from a wood mill. I'm pretty yeah. comfortable with that, but, but, I, but I, I'm because trying to- Because it's, it's the, um, waste products so waste products yep. that are going to be there anyway that they're Burnt. actually going Usually to burn. They burn them yeah and so we might as well have them and do some good with them right yep. but but where there's wood chip that it comes directly from the cutting down of trees just to produce the wood chip yeah no you yeah. You, you couldn't have that no. because it's not it's not environmentally sustainable it's not in harmony with love so there's an example of environmentally yes. you've got to look at the underlying motivation you and you want to look at this, this point is about i want to look at the potential harm so i don't want to be oh i don't care where it comes from just give it yeah, to me it's not yeah. just it's not just give it to me i don't care where it comes from see that's will for ignorance yes mm. yeah yeah there's yeah. a sin in that there's a sin yeah yeah you want to you want to know where it came from so yeah. that you can do something about it and keeping in mind we're defining all these sins because intentional sin, this is where there's the need for forgiveness or repentance, depending on whether we've engaged with the sin or been hurt by the sin. Yeah, so in re as a reminder, just yes. remind everybody who's listening that we have to first identify a sin before we can forgive it or repent for it. Exactly. And what we're trying to do here is help you identify sins yes. and what classifications they fall into. Yeah. And if you look at this, these definitions of intentional sin, you'll see intentional sin is a very wide net. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Much wider than the average person believes. <laughs> yes. Much wider. So, yes. so next on our list is the breaking of God's laws of love with an attitude of either superiority yep. over others or inferiority exactly now a lot of us have come to feel that if i treat myself as inferior there's no sin here because you know most Not people true. don't have a most people on earth don't have a problem with that yeah so i don't think there should be a problem with it yeah, it's a willful is. sin from god's perspective it has sin. its consequences that will yeah. always end in things like people using you people you know mm -hmm. 
abusing the fact that you're giving things to them and all those kind of consequences. And by by wanting to hold on to that attitude of inferiority, we're actually supporting them. You're in supporting their superiority sin. in others. Yeah. Yes. And that's actually a, a sin a, sustaining their yeah. sin. Yeah. And so. it's because they're not only going to feel empowered to treat me as inferior through my agreement, they'll feel more okay with treating Others other people inferior. inferior. To, yeah. So it's not just the way it impacts me. Exactly. That's why God sees it so seriously. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mm. Okay, breaking God's laws with an attitude of laziness or lack of care. Yeah, so like, but most people think, oh, I was just lazy. Uh, that's all right, you know. Yeah. But God sees laziness very seriously and a lack of care very seriously, particularly when humans are involved, particularly when human life is involved and, mm. and humans are involved. Well, very often laziness impacts human life, whether we want to well, see that or not. Well, uh, laziness just by itself impacts every single person that lives around us. Yeah. Our laziness means that they need to do something to compensate for our laziness mm. usually, and that's very unloving. And from my experience, the root cause of laziness is rage anyway. Rage, yeah. yeah. Anger. <laughs> yeah. Of course it is. Yeah. And lack of care is very similar. Yeah. Not wanting to care for a person, not caring about the results of you know, what you do for other people. You know, an example of that is just like driving along the highway, you've, you know, you've had some McDonald's or something, you know, some kind of, some kind of takeaway. <laughs> Not us, but yes. Yeah, and yes, you throw yeah, out the yeah. paper out the window as you yeah. go past, you know. Yeah. You say, oh, it'll decompose, or whatever. Yeah. And when a lot of it's plastic and it's going to take thousands of years to decompose. Yeah. Um, you know, there's an example of, 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 a, of a lack of care that has effect on other people and the environment and, and, and many things, actually. Mm. Even later on, your own food chain, you'll find you, you'll start yeah. eating your own plastic, yeah. which I've actually done studies of. And every person now is basically now eating some plastic yeah. in their day to day life, pretty yeah. much because of the food chain. And and the main reason why is because it was just a lack of care. Yes. Like yeah. We're not thorough about things for whatever reason. And that's our next one. Um, doing things with an attitude of a lack of thoroughness. Yes, not uh, sort of crossing the I's and dotting the T's, making sure of the details. Yeah. You know, most people think that's pedantic and mm -hmm. they have a lot of judgment about that. But mm -hmm. the reality is it can save lives and particularly depending on different jobs. Yeah. It can save multitudes of lives. You know, if, you, if you're not thorough when you're an engineer building a building, there's a potential the building will fall down. Yes. And, and there's been place, places in the world where that has actually happened and killed hundreds and sometimes thousands of people yeah. just because Terrible of tragedies. the poor engineering and somebody not being thorough. Yeah. So, you know, it's definitely a sin from mm -hmm. God's perspective uh, and it has its consequence. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so breaking God's laws with attitudes that meet the first definition of an accident, which is what we said. Yeah. So that's where there's simple conditions in my soul. I've been skipping over it for a long, long time. A yeah. massive event happens. And not only you, but collectively yeah. society and other people have all been yeah. doing the same thing and a massive event happens. Yeah. You know, yeah. that everybody, everybody, a lot of people are harmed by. Yeah. You know, there's an example. Yeah. yeah. And finally, just uh, doing things without taking responsibility. Yeah, remember that God's uh, got laws to enforce self-responsibility. Mm -hmm. So every time we act out of self-responsibility, we're actually breaking a lot of laws. Yeah. A lot, in fact, the majority of them. And it's intentional sin. It's intentional sin from yeah. God's perspective. Yeah. Every time you don't take responsibility for your own emotion, you're mm -hmm. intentionally sinning. Yeah. Every time you don't take responsibility for your fear or your anger or whatever else, you're, you're intentionally sinning from mm -hmm. God's perspective. Mm -hmm. And these are all things you'll need to be repentant for at some point. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So we could keep going on that we list. Could, we could, we could but we'd be here all day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we better, you know, finish it there. But you can see that the that it's a wide net. That uh, uh, you know the, the the God's definition of intentional sin is a very wide definition, and you can see that most things that the majority of people on earth view as accidents or mistakes are not actually accidents or mistakes from God's mm. perspective, but they are intentional sins. Mm. 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 So let's talk about God's viewpoint of intentional sin now. We've defined yeah. what intentional sin is. What's God's viewpoint of intentional sin? Well, God views intentional sin, obviously, it, 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 as a very in a very much uh, more serious light than, than God views any accident. And, and that's, you can see why, mm -hmm. because in the, in, we had the intention to hurt somebody or hurt ourselves or hurt the environment. 
we had the intention to be selfish. We had the intention to, you know, control, demand, and do the, a lot of other unloving things in the sin. Mm -hmm. And and every time we have intentions that are sin, God's, God's treating these particular intentions as very, very serious. Mm -hmm. And all of God's laws treat those intentions as serious. And there are serious consequences for any time we intentionally sin, depending on the type of sin and, and its scope. Yep. In other words, the type of sin, whether it's uh, like whether it affects a life or just affects a little thing or its scope, how many people it affects or mm -hmm. how, many, how much of the environment affects. Well, each one of these things are measured yep. and, and uh, God treats everything with, with, uh, with the, um, we could say, a relationship between its cause in terms of its uh, severity, size and so forth and the effect in terms mm -hmm. of the severity and size of the effect. Mm. There is a direct relationship between those mm. two things. But God's laws are, are in operation to very firmly, stringently, uh, precisely correct yes. intentional sin. Yes. And there's a lot of compensatory um, implications, isn't there? Based upon the law's operations, yes. Because our intention is involved in the sin. Exactly. And God, that God's viewing our God's intention God's not just trying to desire. educate us now. Yeah. God's, God's also trying to correct our... Yeah purposeful negligence or lack of responsibility or error or evil mm. so so that's not the same as just educating a, a you know a, a person a from slate, something that yes. they don't know to something they know yeah this is now uh, this is now a completely different form of education mm. based upon a correctional system mm -hmm. that needs to occur so that we can become more loving and everyone around us can be happier mm. including ourselves because when will and desire is involved in the first, in the true accident, will and desire is involved in a sincere kind of loving intention or a, or a exploratory intention, which is still loving, from which God's is perspective. still loving. Whereas um, when we're talking about intentional sin, now this very precious gift, the one that God sees as the most serious thing that we can utilize desire mm -hmm. um and how our will is expressed how our will is expressed mm -hmm. continually mm -hmm. um that's engaged in opposition to god's laws directly in opposition to god's laws that's what makes it intentional sin yeah. so god is saying my goodness this child that i'm trying to educate towards love is directly opposing that education yeah he's, he's directly going down the, the road of evil yeah <laughs> So now my laws must act in a very firm and um, immediate way to draw attention to this problem and yes. to try to limit the actual mm. impact of that negative will on everyone around. That's right. And yeah. God's view of evil is, uh, is also very refined. Yes. Much more refined than what, than what a person we... on earth would believe. Mm. Yes. So, you know, from God's perspective, if you are just selfish, that's evil. If you are just having a demand on others, that's evil. If you are trying to pull down somebody's worth, that's evil. Yeah. If you're trying to hurt somebody, not kill them, but hurt them, that's evil mm -hmm. from God's perspective. So, so there's a lot of things that are evil and God's going, well, no, these are evil behaviours. These are driven by sinful desires that need to be removed from a person. Otherwise, they'll go and continue even, even potentially worse in their acts mm. or their behaviour. And so God wants to correct that. And, and God's laws have been designed specifically to really put a lot of emphasis on correcting these kinds of behaviour. Mm. Mm. Okay. Which is good. It's great. Because it, it, it gives the humanity and each person individually the potential to be very happy. But God is not sacrificing happiness here. God, God doesn't say, you're allowed to be happy, but you, you're allowed to make other people unhappy for the sake of your happiness. Yeah. That's not how God is. God wants everybody to be happy. And we can see that that's a very, very di different goal than the majority of people on the planet have. Mm. The majority of people on the planet don't care about other people's happiness. Yeah. They only care about their own or their immediate family's happiness. Yeah. And, and this is a big problem. And God's laws are trying to correct this unloving condition. Mm -hmm. mm. mm. Got gotcha. you.